My name is Joel Gadette. The rest of our crew take a look at where we sit after three tests. Annie Thoris' daughter, twice the fittest woman on earth, trying to become the three-time fittest woman on earth with a decade in between. She is atop the semifinal standings with Gabby Magala, some of the young blood coming up behind her. Number one ranked woman in the world is Laura Horvath in lane five, or excuse me, in fifth place. Test four and five mad, snatching and running. Yes, within six minutes, uh, run 800 meters, and after that remaining of the time, establish a heavy snatch. Two minutes, two minutes rest, then on to eight snatches and 800 meter sprint on the runner. Recipe for success brought to us by RP. Well, first of all, innovate number four is not about the run. It's all about setting yourself up for success for the lifts, making sure you have enough time and you're, you're not well enough rested. The second one, though, reverse, it is all about the run. That is exactly where you can make your mark. So go out there and push from the very beginning. It's a barn burner. Talked about Laura Harvath and Annie Thoris' daughter in lanes one and six, but also keep an eye on Karen Freyova, who comes in in fourth place overall. And for more on her, Lauren Smith. Cheers, guys. Yes, we know that Karen Freyover comes into this as one of the biggest snatches on record. Also, keep your eye out for Annie Thoris' daughter. And Gabby, two points away from Annie, is going to need to double down on the second part of this workout. But we know she's got that run in the locker. Lauren, thank you. Gabby Magala just edging out Annie Thoris' daughter for the Test 3 win by literally hundredths of a second this morning. <laughs> it's tight. The margin for error is small. And we are off to the runner here. 800 meters to get you going before we snatch heavy. And this could be equally tight. Not necessarily, not the test number four, but test number five coming up right afterwards could be equally tight. It could come down to the seconds as well. Annie Thor's daughter spoke to her yesterday. A little bit worried about the snatch. She is a phenomenal weightlifter, but she said, I like to lift in Olympic weightlifting shoes. We said, would you run in Olympic weightlifting shoes? She said, no, she's gonna run in regular runners, lift in those regular normal training shoes. We have seen some athletes do this first 800 meter run, Jack Farlow, namely at the North America East Regional, so that they had Ole shoes on for the heavy snatch. That's pretty impressive though, going out there and running it in, uh, in Ole's. I can't imagine it's comfortable. No, I mean, depending a little bit on what kind of, of, what kind of stride you have and, and, and how your foot placing is, I get it, but then again, I don't. 200 pounds, still the number to beat on the snatch. That's all the way back in heat one. That was Marie Rabin. So Laura Horvath here looking uh, pretty, pretty calm right next to Matilda Oyen Garns as we're looking over the entire field of athletes out there. They do look very relaxed which is exactly what they need to do. As we talked about in the previous heat with Lucy Campbell as well, set yourself up good. And this is Laura Horvath, the number one ranked woman in the world. Mads, but she kind of flies under the radar for the number one ranked woman currently. If you ask somebody about Laura Horvath, a lot of times they will respond with what she can't do versus yep. what she can. A lot of attention gets paid to the fact that she struggles with deficit handstand push-ups. And when we talked to her camp a couple of days ago, they said, listen, sometimes she gets a little bit more reserved and a little bit shy and she can pull away because that's the, the, the conversation around her when the eyes aren't necessarily on the fact that she is a multiple time podium finisher. Well, I think, it's, I think it's both that, obviously. I mean, you need to pay some respect to all the things that she's good at, but she's one of these athletes, kind of like a lot of other athletes we've seen in the past, Christine Holt being one of them. They just happen to be in the best heat with the best performers and they're always right up there in second, third place. But you, you, never really, you never really see him until suddenly you look at the leaderboard and you're like, Jesus, this is impressive. The only time you really start talking about him is when there's something that they can't do. So it's like, hey, you're going to get a lot of, ex of, of exposure if you're first or if you're dead last. Now, Horvath, right underneath the, that top echelon that gives her the attention. And so we start thinking about her when there's something she can't do. But she is capable, very capable. If you look at... Karen Freyova. I spoke to her earlier today and actually she told me that she drove the nine hours from, Flo from Slovakia to Berlin. She's going to head over to that barbell and she's aiming for a 93 kilograms. But she said she is feeling a little bit worse for her after that drive. So fingers crossed she's got that in the locker. We know she has a huge snatch and she's very capable under the bar. And if it's ever going to come out, surely it's going to come out semi-finals time. So she's looking at a 205. 
That would be good for the best. <laughs> and it is Freyova who is off early along with Gabby Magala. Magala in the pink, further up your screen. Freyova in the blue up front. Opening at 190. <laughs> Magala is opening up at 170. Five. And that was a little bit more of a struggle than maybe Gabby Magala would have wanted, but she has a lift under her belt. And how about oh. Freyova at 190? Oh, Marie Robin, better be shaking in your boots with that 200. Thoris daughter, no. Ella Vunger at 165, right now is on the cut line of making it in. Thoris daughter connects. That's good at 175. 170 for Emma Tall as well. 180 here for Manal Anganese. Yes. yes. That's a strong catch there. <laughs> a lot of patience sitting there waiting for it to get balanced. 185 for Gabby Migala. Laura Horvath in the background going at 190. Migala hits. Oh, oh Horvath. Hits. Nice. Freyova to tie for the test record here at this semifinal. No. Oh. And she missed behind. 185 for Andy Thoris, here. 190 for Anganese. Oh, 180 for Tal, power snatching it. Oh, she missed that. Horvath has 200 on the bar, far left of your screen. Megala here at 195. Yes, what? Horvath for 200. How about yes. Horvath? Hat in the ring. Oh. She is now tied with Marie Robin, and she has 30 seconds to add to it. Forest Daughter connects what? on 195. Yes. We'll see if Annie takes another attempt with 20 seconds to move the bar. Laura Horvath is going to attempt 210. She doesn't have to. She only needs to go for 205. Yep, yeah, but then again, if you're Laura, then you're Laura. This is what Laura does. Here's Magala. Horvath left. Both yes. successfully stand. Yes. Laura Horvath oh. has a win. Let's talk about the things that Laura Horvath does so well. This is one of them. Wow. Put some respect on the name of the number one ranked woman in the sport. Annie Thor's daughter got some great lifts in as well. She's got to be pretty happy with that one. But Laura Horvath, 210. Great patience to the top, fast sit. Awesome. Awesome. And she's got to be happy with that. Gabby Magala looked really good here as well under the gun. We had big weights going up across the board in this sixth and final heat, and it was looking like we might not. That Robin 200 from heat one was just hanging around. <laughs> Two hundred and ten pounds. Karen Freyova, two hundred and ten as well. Top the leaderboard for test four. Nice. As we get set for test five. Annie Thor's daughter was your overall leader by two points. So we're moving on now to the eight snatches followed by an 800 meter run on the assault runner where they really need to push the pace. Oh, this is interesting because also it's also a mindset thing. It's like you've just done what you want or you're coming off a little bit of a dis disappointment. You get two minutes, focus yourself and get after it again with a different task. 125 pounds, eight times on a snatch here. Not gonna be a problem with any of these ladies. Juliano moving through, bottom right of your screen. 
She is lurking on the cut line with Ella Bunger as well. Oh! Off to the runners. Wow. To Laura Horvath, first one onto the runner. Pavi Gym provides the highest quality flooring to help gym owners and garage gyms alike. You can scan that QR code or visit pavigym.com to learn more. And if you're a CrossFit affiliate owner, check out Pavi Gym's offer in the affiliate partner network to save up to 50% off your new floor today. You see Fuliano in the, uh, it's just in the bottom of your screen right now. If you look at the top of your screen, you see Laura Horvath. Slight forward inclination, long strides, leaning into it. Fuliano is like the short, shorter athlete right there on your screen. A little bit of a different technique. Mads, take a look at the strides here for all these varying athletes side by side. Exactly. So you're looking on the right side of your screen at Fuliano. Higher cadence, a little bit of a, of a shorter stride. And she needs to maintain that, whereas Horvath, slightly longer stride, not moving her upper body quite as much from side to side, but she's always got also got that forward inclination. So different en energy expansion of these uh, of these two. And what it means is that for Laura to, to, to speed up, all she has to do is lean forward just a little bit more. For uh, Fuliano, she's going to have to lean forward and start driving her knees a lot harder than she does right now. Hand in the air is 500 meters remaining. We'll lose a finger for each 100 meters from that point forward. Annie Thor's daughter in the light blue top, Karen Freova in the dark blue, each with 400 meters remaining. Thor's daughter looks like she is hunting dinner right now. She is on a mission. I think that's Sarah Connor, actually, we're looking at Terminator. Is it bad that for a hot second I went, Sarah Connor's not in this competition? <laughs> this is where it gets interesting, because about 300, 250 meters left, this is when you're either going to suffer a little bit more or you're going to start going faster. And it feels like it feels like Karen Ferriova is going just a little bit faster than she has been before. Three twelve is the number to beat. Look at their feet now. Some of these athletes have picked it up quite, quite aggressively. You've got in the top of your screen, orange top is um, is Gabby Megawa, but you've also got Lara Horvath all the way at the top. She's going a lot faster than she was before. Fuliano at the bottom looks like she's opened her stride length. Here comes oh. Megala. That is two test wins for Gabby Megala on moving day. No, it's a heat win. She, I believe, was just behind the 312. It was very close. Freyova comes in behind her. Now here is Annie Thoris' daughter. Vunger, that'll be big for her, looming around the cut line. Here is Horvath, Madeleine Pashon. Wow. Crazy pickup by, by, by Gabby Megawa. 3.15, so she comes in behind the time to beat. But it's still going to be a tremendous finish for Gabby Megawa. So we saw a lot of athletes, one more, like, again, we saw a lot of athletes making it onto the runner pretty much at the same time. Gabby Migawa was about fifth or sixth onto the runner. She was not the fastest one to start with. Her pace was a little bit behind everybody else's, but she progressively picked up the pace all the way, which led her to a position where she could jog across the line with only Karen Ferova right behind her, but not necessarily threatening.